everyone inside Google thinks they have a competitive moat, and neither does OpenAI, leading some Googlers to think that the one clear winner in all of this open versus closed debate to be Meta. Palyama models are not open. There's a clear divide between open source and closed AI models. But why? Google's involvement with large language models dates back to 2013, but the first model to use the transformer architecture, which it, we talked about in episodes one, and changed the way technology understood the context of words was in 2018 with BERT. Google open source BERT, making language models accessible to the broader AI community. In 2019, Google released the T5 model, also under an open source license. And in 2021, Google introduced Flam, also open source. This means that Google is more open at OpenAI. Developers can download models, at least through 2021. Then, in 2022, they released Palm, which was way more advanced than any previous models and closed source. While Google did share research papers and technical details about Palm, the model itself, including its weights and the full training data, was kept proprietary. After that, they released Palm 2, then Gemini, Google's most superior model, all closed source. But why the change in approach? Well, that's how Google does a lot of things. They have a long history of balancing open source contributions and proprietary technologies across various domains, not just in AI. As keeping certain technologies proprietary helps in maintaining a competitive edge. For example, Google Chrome is proprietary and Google Chromium, which provides the base code for Chrome, is open source. So Google's AI strategy reflects this balance between contributing to broader research community by open source some models and at the same time leveraging their cutting edge advancements for competitive and business advantages by keeping the latest, most powerful foundation models proprietary. Where things get interesting when it comes to AI is that not everyone inside Google thinks they have a competitive moat, and neither does OpenAI. A leaked internal memo in May 2023 says, we have no moat and neither does OpenAI. We've done a lot of looking over our shoulders at OpenAI. Who will cross the next milestone? What will the next move be? But the uncomfortable truth is we are in position to win this arms race and neither is OpenAI. While we've been squabbling, a third faction has been quiet eating our lunch. I'm talking, of course, about open source. So they go on to to try to understand what happened, why we could have seen it come, what we missed, and they go on to ask who would pay for a Google product with usage restriction if there is a free, high quality alternative without them. And then ask, what about OpenAI? All this talk of open source can feel unfair given OpenAI current closed policy. Why do we have to share if they won't? But the fact of the matter is, we are already sharing everything with them in the form of the steady flow of poached senior research. And in the end, OpenAI doesn't matter. They are making the same mistakes we are in their posture relative to open source. And the one clear winner in all of this is Meta. Let's talk about Meta and its foundation model, Llama, which stands for Large Language Model Meta AI. Llama was launched on February 24th, 2023 and intended for research purpose. What Meta did specifically was release Llama's model's weights to the research community under a known commercial license. All the powerful LLMs typically only accessible for limited APIs, so you have to go through OpenAI and access the API. But you cannot really, let's say, download the model or run it on your computer. One week later, the model leaked. Suddenly, anyone could fine-tune the model to do anything, kicking off a race to the bottom on low-budget fine-tuning projects. The AI community started fine-tuning and reached amazing things, like running Yama on a MacBook versus the supercomputers. Some people got scared about the newsies, like Jeffrey Laddish, an AI cybersecurity researcher. Well, Meta's 65 billion parameter language model just got leaked to the public internet. That was fast. Get ready for loads of personalized spam and phishing attempts. Open source this model was a terrible idea. And he was not the only person who was angry. The United States Senate was angry too, saying, Dear Mrs. Zuckerberg, we write with concern over the leak, not sure why in quotes, of Meta's AI model, Meta AI, Yama, and the potential for its muses and spam, frauds, malware, privacy violations, harassment, and, and another wrongdoing on arms. It's a huge letter that they gotta explain why this was not a good idea. There are a lot of questions to Mark Zuckerberg, but he takes a different approach. He saw how the AI community was using 
advancing and creating. When the time came to launch Lima 2, five months later, Zook posts on Instagram, of course. So they were open source Lima 2 with our preferred partner, Microsoft. I guess Microsoft is the preferred partner of a lot of AI companies. This gives research and business access to builds with our next generation large language model as the foundation of their work. Grateful to Satya, Satya Nadella, Microsoft CEO, and our teams for making it happen. He continued with Llama 3. Today, we're introducing Meta Llama 3, the next generation of our state-of-the-art open source large language model. But Llama models are not open source. We make software open source by releasing its source code and by granting rights to use the source on an approval license by the open source initiative. First, Meta released the model's weights, but not their training data or the codes, which are key, as we discussed in part two. Second, their license requirements do not comply with the open source initiative's criteria. Among others, Meta stipulates that companies with 700 million monthly active users must request a license. 700 million users is a lot. Specifically, just Meta companies in YouTube, TikTok, WeChat, Telegram, Snapchat, and some other Chinese social media that I don't want to mispronounce have that, with X coming close. But it doesn't matter. As a developer wrote, you can use it unless you work at, say, Google. Imagine if Linux was open source unless you work at Facebook. You can just call something open source if it isn't. And the OSI wrote a public letter to Meta. Meta Lyama 2 license is not open source. Meta is confusing open source with resources available to some users under some conditions. Two very different things. We've asked them to correct their misstatement. Why is Mark saying his models are open if they're not? Not even OpenAI does that. <laughs> There are a few motivations that are probably in place. First, regulatory reasons. AI regulation is coming and open source might be regulated more lightly. In the European Union AI Act, which aims to be the world's first comprehensive AI legislation, for example, open source models benefit from somewhat lighter touch regulation than proprietary models. Second, as Google Licked Memo said, owning the ecosystem, letting open source work for us. Because the leaked model was theirs, they have effectively garnered an entire planet's worth of free labor. Since most open source innovation is happening on top of their architecture, there is nothing is stopping them from directly incorporating into their products. Lastly, Meta might be using openness as a tool for redemption to repair its public image after various controversies like the Cambridge Analytica data scandal. There's a lot of open source washing and we need to be closed otherwise something terrible can happen narrative. By setting the tone of what AI should represent, these companies influence regulatory frameworks, job markets, and public opinion. The branding of these LLMs significantly impacts not just the tech industry, but also society. So ask. The best way of learning is by asking. Until our next, but why?